Hey guys and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. This is the final episode of my 2D online multiplayer tutorial series and in this episode we'll look at finishing our player shoot mechanics so that our players die and respawn. We're going to get the health resetting and our player location changing when they respawn. So I'm going to hop into Unity and get started. I'm going to open our player prefab and then open the health script attached to the prefab inside of Visual Studio. Right now we're adjusting the fill image but I want to actually create a health amount so I'm going to create a public float called health amount then I'm going to create a new private function and I'm going to call it check health inside this I'm going to set our fill image dot fill amount equal to the health amount divided by 100 this is because the max fill amount is 1 and the minimum is 0 then I'm going to type if photon view dot is mine and our health amount is less or equal to 0 we're going to type this dot get component photon view to get our photon view component. Then we're going to call an RPC called dead, which we'll create in a moment. I'm going to create the RPC called dead underneath this by typing pon RPC and then creating a private function called dead or whatever you're going to call your RPC. Inside this, we're going to set a few things so that our player dies. So I'm going to create a public rigid body called RB, a public box collider 2D called BC, and a public sprite renderer called SR. Then inside our dead function, we're going to set our rb.gravity scale equal to 1, our box collider.enabled equal to false, and then we're also going to disable our sprite renderer so our player disappears for a moment while they're respawning. Then I'm going to copy this function and change the name to respawn. Then we're going to set our gravity scale to 1 here and actually change the one before to 0. Then we're also going to set our enabled to true and true for our sprite renderer and box collider. Inside our modify health script, we we'll also type health amount minus equals amount and paste that into the if and else statement. Now inside of Unity, I'm going to give our player a health value. Something like 100 would be best. Then drag in our rigid body 2D box collider and then our sprite renderer into the slots in the inspector so that our player script can access them. Now we're going to go back into our main game scene so that we can start designing our respawn UI. So it comes up on the screen when our player dies, telling them that they're about to respawn. So go onto our game canvas and create an empty game object and call this something like respawn menu. Hold the alt and shift key and stretch it to the entire size of the screen. Then create an image as a child of the object and also stretch this to the screen size. Give the image a color something like white and lower the opacity a little bit. And then add a new UI text game object. And I'm going to type something like respawning in and then dot 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 which we'll edit in the script. As always, edit this font to how you'd like and make sure to set it to overflow on both horizontal and vertical. Once you're happy with how your respawn panel looks, we're going to go into our game manager and open up the game manager script. First of all at the top, we're going to create a public static game manager and call it something like instance, but then inside our private awake function, we're going to set our instance equal to this. Now we're going to create a few more variables. We're first of all going to create a public game object called local player, but we're going to hide this in the use vector because we don't need to see it in Unity. Then we're going to create a public text, and we're going to call this respawn timer text, which is what we just created. And then we're going to type public game object respawn menu, and then create a private float called timer amount, and I'm going to initially set it to 5 seconds. Then lastly, we're going to create a private bullet called run spawn timer and set it to false. Now we're going to create a new private function called start respawn and inside of this we're going to set our timer amount minus equal to time.delta time. Then we're going to set what our respawn timer text dot text says in the panel. So I'm going to set mine to say something like respawning in and then we're going to set timer amount to string and then we're going to type f0 because that's the format we want it in. I create an if statement stating if our timer amount is less than or equal to 0 and then inside of this, we're going to type respawn menu set active false because our player is going to be rejoining the game. And we're also going to set our run spawn timer equal to false. Now inside of our update function, we're going to type a new if statement stating if run spawn timer is true, then call our start respawn function. Now create another private function called enable respawn. And inside this, set our timer amount equal to 5 seconds and then our run spawn timer equal to true. Now inside of our health script, we're going to create a few variables, starting with a public player called PL Move, and then a public game object called Player Canvas. Now, inside of a private awake function, we're going to set our if photon view dot is mine, and then inside this game manager dot instance dot local player equals this dot game object, so that we can set our local player. 
and then we're going to go into our dead RPC function and set our player canvas to false and then our player canvas dot set active to true in the else statement. Now inside of our player script we're going to create a public bool called disable input equals false so that when our player dies he can't move anymore and we're going to alter our update function so that we're only running our check input function if our disable input is false. Now inside our health script if our health is zero we're going to set our pl move dot disable input equal to true so our player can't move when they're dead and then we're going to create a public function called enable input and we're going to set pl move dot disable input to false so that we can actually re-enable when we respawn. Now inside of our game manager script in our start respawn function we're going to get our local players photon view component and we're going to call our rpc respawn so that our player can get back into the game once they die. Then we're going to call this with photon targets to all buffered so new players can also see our players respawn and we're going to type local player dot get component health and then we're going to type enable input so our player can move again. Now inside of our enable respawn function we're going to set our respawn menu to true and then I'm going to change this to a public function. Inside of our health script we want to actually call our enable respawn function inside the check health function so we're going to type game manager dot instance dot enable respawn. Lastly we're going to call our check input function at the bottom of our modify health function. Head back to unity and on our game manager object we're going to drag in our respawn menu and our respawn timer text and then we're going to disable our respawn menu because we enable it through script. Then we're going to open up our player prefab and then we're going to make sure that we drag in our player canvas which is the world space canvas and then we're also going to drag in our player script to the player move. We're nearly done so if we hit play to test this out so far we'll see that when we kill our player he respawns but he actually stays in the same position and his health doesn't reset. So we're going to alter this in a moment. You might want to alter your bullet damage amount because mine's a bit high as it's a one hit kill at the moment. But at least it works. So now what we're going to do is head back to our main game scene and open our game manager script. Inside of this I'm going to create a public function called respawn location so that we can change our player's location when they respawn so they don't keep spawning in the same place. I'm going to create a float called random value and set this to random range and give it a value of something like minus three and five. You can always increase this if you want more of a range to spawn in. We're also going to set our local player position equal to a new vector 3 and then random value in something like 3 so they spawn in the air. Don't forget to call this new respawn location function inside of our start respawn function. Now we're going to head to our health script where inside of our respawn we're going to set our fill image to fill amount to 1 and then our health amount to 100. This is going to get our player's health resetting when they respawn. If we build the game and kill our player we'll see that on their screen it comes up with the respawn panel and counts down and then now they actually respawn in the air in a random position and their health is full again and we can kill them again. This works on both devices and that's our full respawn method working. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, this is the final video in our multiplayer series. These are obviously just the basics of multiplayer and they can easily be changed. For example, if you wanted to send the player straight back to the lobby, you could easily use the code from earlier and put that in instead of respawning the player. So that's all for this multiplayer tutorial series. I hope you really enjoyed it and it worked for you. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments or of course the Discord server which will be coming out soon. I've just got some finishing touches to do on it. Thank you for all the support so far and thank you for 200 subscribers guys. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, the link as always will be in the description and make sure to stay tuned for new series.